Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to the Sunday afternoon I promised my wife full of sunshine as you can see it's not sunny this fog has rolled in again but the weather's been so nice and warm lately I really think summer's on the way I'm hoping the fog clears but we're gonna go out and look for some spider crabs and with any luck maybe some fish as well I don't know how you know where we're gonna go we're gonna go out and then we'll come back there has been some good reports of sea bass lately, so I hope that the water's warmed up. It felt pretty warm back there. People have been saying around 13 degrees, so hopefully that's conducive to fish today. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> so, a funny story, or not so funny. Just looking through my gear, ready to get the shore diving kit ready. Forgot my spear gun. Very big part of spear fishing is having a spear gun. So I guess we're looking for spider crabs today instead. <laughs> And because I forgot to shave my top lip, emergency dive razor. Much better. Ah, spearfishing sound spear gun. I've done this before. Okay. Thankfully, we were greeted by some fantastic visibility for this area. I'm not sure if it's because I didn't have my spear gun and I was observing more, but it just seemed like the sea was completely alive today. These lesser spotted dogfish are actually okay to eat. However, I was happy just showing Hannah. This strikingly marked ray is a female undulate ray. These rays are really susceptible to getting taken by trawlers, but since there's an inshore ban on trawling, I've been seeing these guys nearly every single dive recently. This is the male undulate ray. If you look closely, you can see the rows of spines all over its tail. As usual, this curious shoal of little pollock came to check us out. Officially can't see shore. Yeah. not having a spear gun the decision has been made to swim back to shore and drive somewhere else where I've had a lot better success with spider crabs in the past and the beauty of the English summer it's 6 p.m. right now and we can still dive till 10 so we've got plenty of time but I think we might swim in and try our luck somewhere else My first, sunset dive. <laughs> first sunset dive on the way back in, Hannah had finally found what we'd been looking for. So all you need to do <laughs> is just grab him by the head and turn him upside down and just hold the head. They can't reach you. You can juggle them. They're, they're pretty slow. And hold him up like Simba. Ah! One hand just enough. Yeah, so let's, let's get it two hands. We'll, I'll film you do it. Unfortunately, we only saw smaller crabs from here on out, so we decided to head back in and continue with our plan to move locations. We only got one spider crab at that last spot, and it's more of a spot that I would go for spear fishing, but I didn't bring a spear gun, so we're going for crabs. Now, this next spot that we're heading to, we're racing against the clock, it's 8.30 p.m. We're going to look for spider crabs to hopefully make a more substantial meal. So on the drive there, let's talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn just about anything. You can learn cooking, playing an instrument, or even video editing. Most spearfishers I know these days, they go out with a GoPro, they film their stuff, but you never see the clips because they don't know how to edit that footage. If you want to learn how to edit footage, jump over to Skillshare and take the class Advanced Video Editing for Premiere Pro 2020 by Geordie Vanderput. One of the best things you can learn out of this class is using proxies. This means you don't need a super powerful beast mode computer to actually edit the footage. You just create smaller copies of that footage and edit that and it's really easy. You can almost edit it on a potato practically. Skillshare is designed specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. You're not going to have me pop up and give you an ad like this one. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Once again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Back to the water. Not the most comfortable situation to be out here, but we haven't gone far. And Hannah has just spotted a very, very nice, so, it's a big spot. Let's get there and go home. Yeah. Just as I expected, there were loads of crabs at this spot. We pushed it a little bit on the time, but we got the result we were after. We got some crabs, so we're gonna cook these up during the week. They're gonna be bloody delicious. And we really worked for these ones. <laughs> Go diving with Dan Man, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Especially when he forgets his spear gun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> time to go. <laughs> I've had these crabs on ice overnight just to put them to sleep. This big guy here with the huge muscles, you can see that he's well and truly limp. If you want to dispatch the crab with a knife a bit quicker, if you don't have time to use the ice or freezer method, you can just lift up the flap here, insert a knife and cleave towards the head and that will dispatch the crab before we put it into the pot. For our water, it's just heavily salted like the sea that it came out of. Make sure it's on a rolling boil and for a crab this size, you probably want about 13 minutes and it'll be done. Now our time is done. Stop the crab cooking any further. Just going to take it out and plunge it straight into a nice bath. And once the crab has cooled down sufficiently so we don't burn our fingers, I will break it down, show you that, and we'll pull out all the delicious white crab meat. It's time to open it up and get all the meat out of it. You can see here, this top section of the carapace comes apart from the body. So all we're gonna do is just break that open. And there is your head with the guts in it. And this is the top section. These are what we call the dead man's fingers. You do not want to eat those. So you can clear those away pretty easily with a knife. Clear that away. And then all you do is simply snap this section in half like that. That's one half and we will break apart all the bits of meat here that you can see. This gooey stuff here, it's a bit funky. You can eat it if you want, but I'm just going to pick all the nice meat out of this crab. My weapons of choice for picking crabs are a little crab picking fork like this and a knife that I do not care about for chopping some of those legs because they tend to have a very thick shell at this time of year and it can be a bit difficult to get into. So a knife that you don't care about for hacking through them helps. And that's the start of a very long process. And just two hours later, there's all your crab meat. Yes, I've done this recipe on my channel before, but it is spider crab linguine. And today we're doing it slightly different to what I've done in the past. This is the Bill Granger recipe for 
crab linguine. This involves French shallots, you could probably use spring onions, they're very similar, crushed garlic, chilies, butter, and a good heaping of olive oil into the pan. We'll heat that up, brown off all the ingredients, fold through the linguine, and then fold through the crab meat, parsley, season it with some lemon zest, lemon juice, and I promise you, if you cook this with someone, it would be an absolute showstopper. Shout out to Bill Granger, Australian food. People ask me all the time, what is Australian food? Well, this book will answer your questions. That's Australian food. Let's get into it. If you can, fresh pasta is the best for this particular recipe. Straight in to the pot, salted water, couple of minutes, that'll be done. And this is exactly where I accidentally knocked the microphone cable out of the side of the camera, so I have no audio for this section, but mix through the linguine, add a little bit of the pasta water in there as well to keep it moist, add the crab meat, stir that through, add the parsley, stir that through as well, salt and pepper. For the garnish, it's just lemon zest on top with some more parsley as well. You can also add a little bit of chili flakes on the top here if you really want to give it that extra kick. Here I am probably saying how great this dish is and all the things that I love about it, blah, 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 get to the taste test. Lastly, blabbing on about the taste of this dish and all the things that are in it and how good it tastes and if you want to impress people when they come around to your house, cook them this meal. It is absolutely fantastic. I guarantee it will be a showstopper if you cook it for someone. Yes, chew, 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 that is delicious. Delicious, delicious. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one.